Well, welcome to Pure Up Ministries and the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pierce. I want to share a word that Jesus explained that in this world you will have trials and tribulations. You're going to have difficulties. But he said, be of good cheer because he overcame the world. And I want to share insight about overcoming difficulties from Catherine Coleman. She was a woman, of course, that truly demonstrated in her life how Jesus took a hold of a lady. She blew it, fell, I mean, but God got a hold of her. She repented, restored, and she began to live it out. Now, having a greater revelation of the Lord Jesus, of His mercies, she walked through great difficulties, but discovered the God of all comfort. And as she laid hold of that comfort, she was able to bring that comfort to others. And that's God's desire is that God would bring you into such a place of great victory in Him, of comfort in Him, that you wouldn't know that He is the God of all comfort. What a wonderful thing, that He wants you to get such a revelation of His comfort that you're able to tangibly share it. And people believe it. So I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you, the God of all comfort. Give us such a now word, a right word that ministers to each person, no matter where they're at. Father, they're going through difficulties. Let them discover that they can believe in you and believe also in Jesus. And to receive the victory won, I thank you, Holy Spirit. Come and open our eyes to see, ears to hear. Let every precious promise that is yes and amen be revelation in our hearts, burning fire, and let it have the impact that the Father desires and bear the fruit that He wishes. So that, Father, we step into our inheritance in you and live boldly for you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, and all the church said, Amen. Hallelujah. We just pray in your name, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In John 14, 1, it says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And what a powerful statement. We come to a place that we have such a confidence in Him. Not in our own abilities, because most of us, we say we believe in God. But we've not come to that place of absolute confidence that God desires us to come to. Where when you go through it, that you know that you can turn to Him, though the earth be shaken and the earth be removed. You have a God who's ever-present in a time of trouble. And that as He said, do not fear, because I am with you. And you can be confident that He is with you, for you, and more than able to deliver you. But we've got to learn how to receive that, how to walk in this and make it known. Jesus also said this, or sorry, in Psalm 91, um, verse 1 and 15. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will rescue and honor him. And I, I want to impress upon you the secret place, the safe place where we come and abide in him, where we're found in him permanently, not passing through. Because all the promises of Psalm 91, all the protections and blessings, all the things it releases in our lives are for those who abide permanently in the secret place, under the shadow, under His authority, under His very purpose, in His eyesight, where He's able to keep us and watch over us, where His Word cleanses and sanctifies us and separates us. Jesus said this in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you so that in me, you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. There's not one thing that has come to, that's trying to take you down, to hurt you, that he did not overcome. And that is why we get a hold of that secret place in him. You always, in every situation, gain a far surpassing victory. It may look like you're down, but you're not out. It may look like you're going through it, but as Paul said, these temporary light afflictions, because we always, in every situation, God turns around for our good because we love Him. And as we set our eyes on Him, a breakthrough is on its way. You may feel like you're holding on by your nails, but God desires to bring you to a place that you're unshakable. A place where no matter what the enemy throws at you, you have a bold confidence in the Lord because you know you've tested and tried and, sh and proven Him again and again and again. And you know. And now you become such a living witness that you're able to bring a real comfort to all those going through it. There's a depth to it, there's a height to it, and there's a reality to it that people see. And people that are going through difficult situations hear the life in that word. 
in what you're saying, in your testimony, that it draws them not to you, but to Jesus. Catherine said this, Never think that because I am God's child and anointed of Him, that I have no troubles, no problems, or no difficulties. The reason that I can help you with your problems and your troubles and your sorrows is because I have troubles too, just like you do. And every one of us on this earth does, but it's how we respond. It's how we yield. And if we lay hold of and receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it changes everything. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus desires that we have life and that abundant, no matter what we're going through. So that every day you can walk in, because this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because of it, through him, and for him. She said this, I could not tell you what to do when you have a broken heart if my own heart had not been broken. I could not give you words of comfort if I had not gone through sorrow myself and been comforted by God, who is the God of all comfort. And I can only give you um, what I now from personal experience have learned through difficult situations. She had tried it and proved it and shown it and discovered it and found a faithful God in the midst of the most difficult situations and as a consequence had real answers. Not inspiration because the inspiration fails. Inspiration is good and gives you a high, but inspiration doesn't tell you fully how to overcome because it doesn't have the life, the victory that overcame the grave. Inspirational words always come to an end, but the words of life of Jesus overcame death, overcame everything, and are able in you to gain a far surpassing victory in and through you. Catherine said this, a difficulty can break or make you. When you face when you come face to face with a difficulty that is in your life, it will either make you bigger, a stronger and better person, or that difficulty will break you. And it's time that we stop allowing it to break us, but rather as we press in in the secret place and abide in that place with the Lord God and allow Him to change us and transform us and exchange strengths. So I'm not trying to overcome in my own strength, but glory to God, I can boast in my weakness. See, when the devil thinks he's got you and he's overwhelming you, and you say, you know, I'm weak. But glory to God, when I am weak, he is strong. It's time to give the devil a heart attack by getting a full revelation of who you are in him and of the victory won and your inheritance. Catherine says this, it depends entirely on you, what you do with it. It depends on, sorry, it does not depend on somebody else. Your victory... You're making or breaking in a trial or difficulty. It's not dependent on other people. And a lot of time we're looking for somebody else to help us. We're looking for somebody else to give us the right word. But it's dependent upon you. It's dependent on my life of surrender, my choosing to get into the secret place and cling and hold fast to the living God. It's about me. Will I go after the Lord? Or will I simply say, will somebody else pray for me? Now, we need people praying for us. We need people praying, lifting us up. That's a good thing. But never fail to pray for yourself. Never fail to pray and go in after the Lord yourself and pay that price of going desperately after God and clinging to Him. Sometimes I think that our difficulties can be compared to knives that either serve or cut us. How we grasp them by the blade or by the handle determines whether we get cut or served. To take hold of a difficulty in the wrong way brings the same results as clutching the knife by the blade. And that's what some folks seem to do. And we've got to learn by the Holy Spirit to walk with the wisdom. And that's found in the secret place. As I daily walk in the secret place, I become more in tune with Him, more sensitive to Him. He begins to lead me because I learned how to walk with Him. How can two walk together unless they be in agreement? And in the secret place, I'm learning how to surrender and hear His voice and get his counsel, wisdom, understanding, discernment, and knowledge, so that no matter what I face, I'm learning. I love when he says, don't do that. And I'm now hearing that, and I don't. And I look back at how much of my past, the Spirit spoke, and that's still a small voice, but it was drowned out by my own lusts and desires. But I'm hearing more. And I've now learned how many times when I didn't do that, I can look back and say, thank God I didn't do that and see the victory, and see where I would have been had I continued on the old path. 
Something's got to change, and it's got to change in you and I in the secret place as we surrender and yield and allow the Holy Spirit to have His way and reveal Jesus. um, Catherine Coleman said this, But when you grasp your trouble by the handle, you can use it to your advantage and become the greatest and most valuable tool that it ever came in your life. When we learn how to take a hold of things and run to the Lord and get a powerful breakthrough and victory, it will so scar you in a good way that you know that your God's for you, with you. Your faith will be stirred and enlarged because you'll discover that He cares for you and that He's faithful to you. And you get a testimony. You get a witness that you can share of the great goodness of the Lord. We must never forget that it's God's purpose to make stronger men and women of us. God never created you or me to be weak or defeated. And God doesn't intend for you to walk in defeat. God expects in every test that we go through that we pass because He's with us. And if we would learn to abide in Him in that secret place where we hear Him, there is not one circumstance, one situation that you go through that you would not overcome and walk victoriously. We should be proud that God deemed us able to handle the trouble. What a thought! That God, you looked at me and you saw in me the ability to pass the test. And you fully expect me to pass it. And that you are with me. What an honor. And that in the midst of this, I'm coming out with a far surpassing victory. And that as I love you, you're turning everything around for my good. And to bring me to a place where I'm blessed to be a blessing. Where you now have something real to share. Many people want to have a story that they can give, a testimony. And God wants to give you such a testimony of victory, not inspiration, but life, so that people going through it now have something real that they can turn to, where people discover that the precious promises are not just nice words we stick on the walls, but are living, and they are real, and they produce results because you are a living epistle demonstrating that. Uh, Catherine said this. Um, Let me quote first from Paul. Paul said this, For the momentary light affliction is producing for us eternal weight of glory, far beyond comparison. While we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18. The things that are seen are temporal. So when I'm going through something, it's temporal. It's bound by time. The devil is bound by time. Your trial, your difficulty is bound by time. That means there's going to come a season where it changes. There's going to come a moment where the clock hits that second, that very moment, where everything has to change and an end comes. There is always an end in Jesus. But... Jesus doesn't know time, and I'm grateful that in Him there's something eternal, and He's able to give you an eternal hope, something that has a life, and you're able to see something that's eternal in the midst of all things, that becomes a rock foundation on which you can stand, and it's found in the secret place. Because as you abide there, you begin to fix your eyes on Him, you see differently. You see from a different perspective where you are raised up and seated with Him in heavenly places, looking down at your trials and circumstances, having your eyes fixed on things above. She said this, If, you could, if God could anoint your eyes with the Holy Spirit eye salve, cause you to see what He allowed that difficulty to come into your life, sorry, why He allowed that difficulty to come into your life, then instead of tears of self-pity, you would have tears of joy, and you would be the happiest person in the world, rejoicing for the victory that God's going to bring in you and the testimony and that you are about to stomp on the devil and gain a far surpassing victory. God wants to do something in you that he wants to once and for all bring you to a place where that devil has defeated you the same thing, the same way, the same again and again to bring you to a place where once and for all you trot on him, you step on him and you break his neck and say no more. And that for once and for all, this door is shut to the devil, and you now gain the victory in that arena, in that area. And we've got to step into this, because this is your inheritance in Christ. Because Jesus made an open triumph over the enemy. 
And as you abide in the secret place, He will give me the share. The Holy Spirit will show you the victory. Jesus, seated at the right hand of the Father, reigning as the Lord of hosts, gleaming in your eye, looking at you with God's love and compassion and saying, my child. And He says, you're an overcomer. How do I get there? Well, first of all, Catherine said, start with the Word of God. That must be the basis of all things. The Holy Spirit exhorts us through the Apostle Paul to say like him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But it has to come by the Holy Spirit breathing on the Word. That's why I never opened this Word out. Holy Spirit, open it to me, praying over it. Give me revelation so that the words have a life to it and an authority to it and produce an impact and bear the fruit that Father wants. That it becomes engrafted in me and I can be able to hear it and do it. Amen? I want it to be a fire in my bones. I want it to do something great, to impart life so that every time I read it, there's a depth, a height to it, a breadth to it, and there's just a richness that comes into me. It's got to be more than just nice words. It's got to do something, and it always draws me deeper into Jesus. It always makes Jesus more real to me, and more real the victory He won, and who I am in Christ. That's got to be bigger, greater, every time I read this thing. You may be asking, how can you do all these things through Christ Jesus? Here's the secret. First of all, be quiet. When difficulty strikes, there's a human tendency to become anxious, frustrated, disturbed. We cannot handle difficulties while, sorry, uh, we cannot handle difficulties well unless we are calm and composed. Where? In the secret place. And that place where I stop and I'm still and know that He is God. Where I refuse to allow things too great for me to steal my attention and take my eyes off of Jesus. Where I come to the place that God, the noise that is hindering me from accurately hearing your voice, stops. And your peace invades me so that I cannot be held captive by fear. But I'm now walking in the freedom of faith. Where I'm now being led by your spirit. And I can laugh and rejoice when my flesh man and the world thinks I'm crazy because they don't see what I see. You're teaching me a new way of living. I'm no longer walking according to a natural order, but as Romans 8 says, a a spiritual order led by the Spirit, where there's life and peace in Him. I'm not held under the cycle of my natural difficulties going around a mountain again and again, facing the same thing and being defeated again and again, that cycle breaks in Jesus. That cycle ends in Jesus because I and Him gain a far surpassing victory and I am more than a conqueror. The first essential, therefore, is to get quiet. Go someplace where you can be alone and I'm going to tell you it's the secret place. That place where I just go after God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my being. Where I just long for Him. I just love on Him. Surround worship. I get my mind focused on Him. you got to change the climate. Sometimes you just got to enter in worship. Sometimes it gets easier and easier as you go in and spend more time going into the secret place and getting after Him. Where that climate very quickly invades and fills you. You become more and more conscious of Him and His touch. And the minute he touches you, everything stops. Everything ceases. Because he always calms the storm. He always brings a peace. So cling to him. Don't let go until that peace comes. Get your eyes in. It's not emptying your mind. It's getting your mind fixed on him. It's about getting your eyes fixed on him. It's about the Holy Spirit opening this word and and, and these words, these promises, having a life to them. They've got to have life, not legalistically. But I come to the well and the Holy Spirit opens and they're not tales, they're not stories, they're life. The longer I live, the more I realize the power and the strength there is in prayerful quietness, in that place of just being still and knowing that He is God, that He is Lord, that He's greater, and that I serve a big Jesus and I have a small devil. No matter how big or great my circumstances might try to declare themselves, my Jesus is bigger. And the Lord of the hosts of the army of heaven, the almighty God, the one who's more than able, 
the wonder working God is for me, with me, and I abide in his presence under his wings, and every promise of Psalm 91 I can apply to my life. All utter distractions should be reduced to a minimum, a place where you are not disturbed. As you enter into the presence of God, let go and listen to your mighty Creator, the one who is the perfect wisdom and perfect knowledge. As He speaks, listen to Him. Receive instruction from Him. Allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on the Word and speak, because God will always speak in line with His Word, in honor of His Word, and declaring the Lordship of Jesus, fully revealing what Jesus did with that liberty and life. And so it should always be tested to align with the Word and bear the fruit of the Spirit, always, as I said, magnifying Jesus. So as you put yourself at God's disposal, He cleanses, He makes whole, He brings healing, reinforcing all your weak places with His mighty strength, because there's an exchange in the sacred place as I yield. He is an ever-present help in the sacred place as I receive. As I choose, and there's always a choice that we've got to make, and the secret place is about a choice, because entering in is a choice. Entering in and receiving is a choice. And I have to come simply by faith, believing the Word, and coming into a place of rest, and saying, yes, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I believe in you, and I believe in Jesus. And I have faith that you are more than able, that you are bigger, you're greater. Let me finish with this. When thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father. And as you do, you will find the reality of that glorious portion of the Word of God. I can do all things. You will not be overcome or defeated by anything that enters into your life. You can do all things to Christ who not only strengthens you, but gives you wisdom, guidance, and help in the secret place. Because in that whisper, there's an authority in those words, and there's life. And those words bring a fire in your bones. Those words bring change. They get your eyes and your heart and your mind off of the natural and onto the Lordship of Jesus and how He's greater and bigger. And the power that raised Christ from the dead now stirs up on the inside of you, seeking to bring you to such a revelation of being made righteous in Christ and as a consequence, you're able to reign in life. And when we get a revelation of who we are in that sacred place, and His words can truly penetrate and have an impact, it's lights out for the devil. Finally, you're able to stop going around the mountain, but enter into what God desires you to enter into the promised land, your inheritance in Christ. Well, I pray you're blessed, encouraged, and strengthened in the name of Jesus. I would ask, this we're seeing so many backsliders restored daily. And that's our heart, is to see backsliders restored and believers helped, edified, built up to live boldly for Jesus. So we build videos around two things, helping backsliders back and helping to edify, train, teach, believers to live boldly for Jesus. As you like, subscribe, and share, you help us be more impactful and reach more people because of the algorithms at Google and YouTube. So I thank you and I ask you, would you like, share, and subscribe? I also would ask you to consider joining our prayer partnership team. You can sign up simply by going to our website, information is below, and going to our partner page. It doesn't cost you anything. Listen, we don't ask any money of you. If you desire to give and share and help us, thank you, Jesus. It enables us to do more, and we're grateful for that. But I know some of you can't, and that's okay. Freely we've received, freely we give. And we just want to bless you, and I want you to be a part of helping us pray and see more backsliders return, see an awakening in the church, and see the church step out and preach this gospel with power see lives truly changed. And I want you to receive the reward of that. And I want you to have people praying for you at any time, any place. Prayer should be the foundation of our lives and needs to grow in our lives. And we'll help you. You'll be invited to our um, Zoom meetings. 
where we minister, mentor, and help you in many ways. You'll get our newsletter, email newsletter, and you can come and join part of our Facebook partnership page as well. I thank you, and I want you to know that we're praying for you. I encourage you to check out other videos in the series, other teaching, preaching videos, to help you come to the revelation that God's called you, anointed, and appointed you for such a time as this, and to help you to live boldly for Jesus and be catapulted into your divine purpose. I pray that you're blessed and encouraged, and this message truly ministered life to you. I thank you for watching, and I thank you, Jesus, that Jesus is Lord. Amen.